From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk a few minutes about heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. And uh, it's a very, very common condition. And uh, as we are using heparin a lot in the hospitalized patients, it's happening with more frequency. So heparin-induced thrombocytopenia it is HIT, and uh, it is happening very frequently. You believe in uh, 2006 in Czech Republic, a nurse was using heparin to deliberately kill patients. She killed seven patients. You remember in March 2008, there were many recalls of heparin and uh, FDA made it uh, a research and uh, they found out this heparin contaminated killed like 80 patients all across United States of America. This was the heparin that was contaminated as it was produced in China. You see, most of this heparin is produced in the intestines of the pigs and the buffaloes. So that is what is happening. And many times these uh, negligence happens. You remember in uh, Sadar um, uh, Sinai Medical Center, the children of Dennis Quaid, they were killed because a nurse administered a wrong dose of heparin. So these mistakes happen. Now, with the regular use of heparin, there are non-hemorrhagic side effects, like you will see in 80% of patients, there will be an elevation of aminotransferase. It's not liver dysfunction. It just... Uh, the amino transferase level goes up and it goes down when you stop the drug. The second one is many patients develop hyperkalemia. The potassium level goes up. So those are the two non-hemorrhagic side effects of using heparin. But in this video, I want to describe the hemorrhagic side effect. That is heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. That is fall of platelet count more than 50% when we start these patients on heparin. And it varies with uh, unfractionated heparin and low molecular weight heparin. In low molecular weight heparin, the incidence is less. Basically, IgG antibodies are formed to heparin platelet factor 4 antibodies. So the platelets and heparin, they bind together and then the antibodies attack that complex, resulting in the destruction of platelets and causing thrombocytopenia. Now, what are the side effects and what are the symptoms? You will see bleeding, but that is that does not occur usually. Thrombosis is detected in about 50% of patients. And the thrombosis can happen in veins or arteries. So bleeding may not be apparent in many cases. So how do you diagnose this condition? Basically, you see thrombocytopenia. You see in many patients with heparin, they develop a benign thrombocytopenia. Okay, and that's not something to worry. To diagnose HIT, you need a decline by 50% in the platelet count. Okay, so if it is 5%, 10%, that is not HIT. Only if it is more than 50% of the platelet count do we diagnose it as HIT. So the pre-existing heparin PF4 antibodies, they are formed in these patients. So if the patient comes back within the next 100 days, they will develop the HIT, HIT, more, uh, uh, more emergently because they already have these PF4 heparin antibodies in their blood. So when you suspect this condition, you will do a functional assay or ELISA to detect those uh, heparin PF4 antibodies. So heparin PF4 antibodies is the key to the diagnosis.
Now the question is, how do you manage HIT? When you suspect this, you should immediately discontinue all forms of heparin. Okay, so stop heparin, the offending agent. Then you should start them on a direct thrombin inhibitor. Okay, so first uh, stop it and send ELISA test and then begin treatment with direct thrombin inhibitor. The most common is ergotroban. Okay, ergotroban. And there is another agent called lipirudin. And there is another agent called bevalridin. So these three agents, folks, remember those three agents, okay? Argatroban, leperodin, bevalridin. These three agents, they are direct thrombin inhibitors. And we use these three agents to treat heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. So when the platelet count, you follow them every day for the next uh, five, six days. And then you start these patients on warfarin because they have that high likelihood of causing coagulation because of the lack of platelets. And uh, so you always record it in the medical chart. The patient has history of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia because in the future, you will be careful about giving heparin, especially they come back in the next 100 days, you should not give because they develop those heparin PF4 antibodies. They come with heparin PF4 antibodies in their blood. And if you give heparin to them, you will see a dramatic decrease in platelet count with serious consequences. So heparin thromb uh, uh, induced thrombocytopenia, it happens when there is more than 50% decrease in platelet count. There is a benign heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. That's not the one you need to be worried about. It's not even defined as HIT, okay? So only when there is more than 50% decline in platelet count should you diagnose it as HIT. And unfractionated heparin has a higher incidence of HIT than low molecular weight heparin like enoxaparin and aloxaparin. The other thing is you look for heparin PF4 antibodies on ELISA to diagnose this condition and uh, the treatment is stop heparin, send for PF4 heparin antibodies, ELISA test or a functional assay, then start them on direct thrombin inhibitors. As I said, ergotraban, leperodin, and bevalrodin. These three agents, most commonly ergotraban is used, so go for it. And it depends on each hospital. And finally, record it in the chart and tell to the patient what happened. Because nowadays we are giving heparin to every patient who is hospitalized because we are using it for DVT prophylaxis. So you should always inform to the patient what happened. So that's about HIT. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 Clinical Skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.